The bread, however, ran out long before the circuses. It, too, had changed from an occasional handout to a regular aspect of public assistance designed to mollify the urban crowd. There was free wine, free grain, oil, bacon, even money. There might be handouts equivalent to 10 or 15 or even 20 dollars to 300,000 people or more. If the state was going to pay for all this, someone had to pay the state. Obviously, that would be the provinces, the producers, the rural population. This led to growing resentment of all those greedy, useless mouths in the city, or else it meant an attempt to join the useless mouths, who at least had some fun, to become a consumer rather than a producer. And this, of course, meant fewer producers and still more problems. The cost of large-scale public assistance did not matter so much when the economy was reasonably stable. But when it was disrupted by civil war after the second century and by foreign invasions after the third, such burdens became serious. As the economy began to crack in the second and third century, the emperors concentrated on squeezing all the money and the goods they could in order to pay the army or else to pay the barbarians whom the army no longer held in check. Now this meant that the economy entered a vicious downward spiral and society with it. There were ever heavier taxes, ever fewer people capable of paying taxes. Inflation and debasement of the currency drove gold and silver out of circulation. Taxes were increasingly paid in kind, in grain, in cattle, in forced labor, or else they weren't paid at all. The economy, which had taken centuries to shift from barter to cash, slipped back to the primitive level of barter. And so this was another factor in the decline of Rome.